municipal authorities, but also to some private stakeholders where that first option has not been possible to, to do. Uh, these are, in general, very dedicated persons, very, uh, very concerned about the local community, and there's a, a very strict clause in, in our renting agreements. It shall be open to the public in some form. And this is very important for us. Some years ago, the government uh, decided to sell lighthouses, but that was stopped pretty soon because uh, the people didn't want them to. They wanted to have public access and be open to the public. So, our local people say that for every euro we put into this corporation, we get tenfold back because labor is very expensive in Norway, and that is uh, in general what they contribute with. A very good, good arrangement. The third of these, uh, or fourth of these strategies is networking, workshop, communication, and profiling. Very important for us. And the Lighthouse Museum at Lindesnes plays a vital role in this aspect for us. You can see on the left here is what we call the Mountain Hall, which is a modern part of the Lighthouse Museum. And we use that as a, as a starting point for a lot of activities, both locally and nationally, for, uh, for doing this task. And it's very important for us to keep a good connection with uh, the heritage authorities, with other local authorities, and of course all the volunteer organizations uh, in this. Inside the mountain hall, there is room for, uh, for many people, and uh, we have a conference center there, concert hall, a lot of activities about cultural history and, and uh, the telling of, of, of that. And it is beautiful in the night time. Uh, you can see the mountain hall on the right, bottom right corner here. And uh, again, at Lindesnes uh, Museum. And of course, the, uh, the lighthouse is in operation with this. We also have some uh, new projects, but uh, since uh, this presentation went down from 20 to 9 minutes, I'm, uh, I'm stopping there. But uh, this is uh, just uh, an image of one of the other lighthouses. Well, the, today there is a gallery inside the existing portion, and there are plans to extend this and make a, make a beautiful, invisible gallery with an astonishing view. Uh, in this. But, uh, there happens, there's a lot of things happening around this project for us. So, to wrap it up, the, the Norwegian Coastal Administration has put extra effort the last uh, four, five, six years in order to, to, uh, to work for the maritime heritage, and especially within those areas, within our responsibility. And I think that during the last few years we have changed the condition for this, both in general and particularly for lighthouses. And through uh, offering especially the alternative use of the lighthouses, as well as the, uh, the knowledge uh, and the storytelling. I think uh, there has been a growing interest for this field in the wide public. So I would say that uh, by nurturing our past, I think we lay the foundation for more goodwill, and that translates to money in the future, so we can take even better care of, of this uh, treasure. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arvin. Our next speaker are uh, Gary Brain. He joined the Australian Maritime Safety Authority in 2003 as a manager. Since uh, to, well, so, uh, 2004, Gary has been the manager of navigation safety. Gary's role entails management, managing AMSA's AIDS navigation network, including outsourcing arrangements. For, provision, for the provision of aids, aid for maintenance, delivery of new project and heritage management. Gary has been a member of the AM committee since 2006. And uh, he will talk about managing the alternative use of light spectrum. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, everybody. Well, I hope the um, slightly thinner numbers um, today don't sort of uh, reflect on the um, fact that the use of, um, I suppose, the conservation of lights and the use of them is not an important issue for certainly for Aton uh, providers and other authorities. It's certainly one that AMSA spends 
quite a lot of time on, and um, it seems to be increasing all the time. And I know I spend a lot of my time sort of dealing with those sorts of issues, so it's certainly one that we need to focus on. Okay, I'm just going to focus on one particular alternative use today, and that's in relation to tourist access to a number of our, um, I suppose, traditional lighthouses. AMSA actually has 13 existing tourist um, arrangements in place, but we've got a few more in the pipeline that we're considering. We'll also look at what alterations to lighthouses and associated buildings have required prior to those sites being able to be open to the public. It's quite a, a deal of um, work that needs to be done at many sites. Training of guides is an important way of ensuring that um, given that the structures we use are operational, uh, that we, um, we need to safeguard those operations and we also need to make sure that any access is being done safely. So we do have an accredited training program. And I just want to very briefly look at one particular site to, which had a couple of issues to do with uh, uh, the setup of it that made it a bit more difficult. And finally, I wanted to just finish with a case short case study on Macquarie Lighthouse, which is one of our most, I suppose, iconic ones in Australia. It's um, located in Sydney and um, we had quite an interesting project there to refurbish that, which I think um, is well worth sort of having a look at. In terms of assessing the feasibility of tourist access, that's, that's the, the first step. Um, we need to look at what current and future operational needs are at the site. Uh, whether the, the lessor, in our case it's usually the state government, AMSA doesn't really own many of its sites anymore, it leases them off the uh, state governments, and it's important that any third party application has been endorsed um, and considered by the, the actual lessor of the site. We also will need to look at the capability and the capacity of the applicant to perform the tourist access function. We have a lot of interest from various community groups around the country to do this sort of work, but the capability to be able to sustain an operation over time is, um, is not always there, and um, even with the best intentions. So, we, now for the effort that we have to put in to approve and, and put these arrangements in place, we need to make sure that this is going to be sustainable. And finally, will the tower accommodate the public safely? Um, that's obviously the, the critical one. It can be got around in some cases with um, various works that can be under modifications, but it needs to be cost effective and given the applicant's pain, quite often that can be the deciding factor. In terms of alterations to buildings, AMSA requires third party operators to actually pay, to arrange and pay for these inspections of the site, and um, that needs to be considered by AMSA before we actually make it final decision. We are fully involved in the inspection process liaising with the UCA building consultant to undertake those inspections and make recommendations on say, uh, changes which need to be made. The applicant usually has to arrange the, um, well they always arrange the building works but um, quite often they'll opt to use AMSA's maintenance, national maintenance contractor and so that's an arrangement I suppose that would work quite well for us because it does mean we can a reasonable assurance of the standard of the works and future maintenance of it of the structure. So examples of um, some of the OHS improvements or modifications we've made um, we have arranged for it at various sites and the use of the perspex screening is one that we've found to be extremely popular because of um, so it's, it's, so it's a good trade-off in terms of um, not detracting from the aesthetic values as much of the um, right houses and uh, providing the right sort of protection. It's another example, stairwells, uh, stairways and um, the actual gaps between uh, that are found on those stairways are pretty important in terms of the, making sure they're secure and the perspex has been used very effectively there. Obviously, um, Headroom is always a problem in confined structures, traditional lighthouses, and um, there's always a need for plenty of signage to um, ensure that uh, even the 
sort of minor accidents don't occur. In this photo, we've got uh, in particular the enclosure.